Hello and welcome students. In today's video, we're going through lab 4.03, which is about nested for loops. We have four of these functions right here, as you can see on my screen. The first one is called draw seven. Then we go through to stars and stripes. Uh, we have a function called increasing triangle and a function called vertical stars and stripes. These functions that we're going to create are all about how we can use um, nested for loops. And specifically in this case, we're going to draw and it's actually a very good way we can see things visually. It's going to be very instructive to you. So in the first function we need to draw, we need to create a seven by seven square of stars. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start since we know this is uh, about nested loops. I'm going to go and create one loop. So like we saw in one of our last lessons, if you haven't seen this, you can see it in lab 4.3, I'm sorry, 4.2. And this is about how you can create for loops using uh, an iterator like right here we have i and this range seven what it does is it basically goes through and it repeats i seven times starting at one going through the seven so i'm saying for i in range seven um, right now if i were to just print a star right as you can see i have draw seven set up down there if i were to just do this kind of want to see if this runs it has the invalid syntax. Oh, that's because I'm not giving it quotation marks. Uh, and I go ahead and press start. It is giving me something weird. I think maybe it's just because I have nothing started. Let's just go ahead and comment these out for now. That way I don't have anything weird. If I go ahead and press play. Okay, I'm still going to get an error. That's totally fine. Okay. So now finally you can see I have a print star, it prints seven stars in a row, right? But we obviously want to print um, seven times. Now, one thing you could do is you could do this where we basically go through and just, you know, do a thing like that seven times and you get the grid. But clearly that's not the point of this lesson. The point of this lesson is we want to do that a little bit more programmatically, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a second for loop inside of our first. So here you can see I have a second for loop where I use J as my iterator and I say for J in range seven. So I'm doing this seven times. I'm gonna go ahead and print one more time my uh, X symbol or uh, my asterisk, I should say. I'm gonna give both of these spaces. Now let's go ahead and see what it does. That just creates a, a very long line of uh, asterisks right here on the right. That's clearly not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click clear all one more time. Now the trick for this is two things. One, there is a special keyword that I can put inside of my uh, 4J in range right here. Um, and I actually don't even need this print statement. Well, I do, but we're, we don't need the asterisk. So this print statement as it is, this end is basically gonna make sure that I only end on um, a, like a new line, right? So this end will make sure that it doesn't go to a new line every single time I print inside of this range right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this print statement as it is with just that blank space. What that's going to let me do is it's going to go to a new line every time that I print right here. So just to step through this before we start, I have this very first I range, right? And I loop through this seven times and I say, just go ahead and print a space and then go down to another for loop. That's what it does. It goes through that seven times. But every single time I go through this first for loop, this I for loop, my outer for loop, I also say I want to iterate through J seven times. And every time I iterate through J, I print my asterisk and I want to give it a space as well. But I also don't want to give it a new line, which is what this end is, right? So it doesn't go down to the next line. That way I can get seven rows. Um, and then every single time I go through this I range, that J range repeats like it never happened before and it re-goes. So if I go ahead and click and I click play, you can see right there, it prints seven lines. And what it's doing is it's printing seven times through the J loop and then it goes down to that next statement and it prints seven times through the J loop again. And it prints that same J loop seven different times. And that's the beauty of nested loops, right? So if we want to go on to our next statement, we're going to continue to experiment with our nested loops. And this one is that we want to write a function, stars and stripes, which, draw, which will draw a three set of rows. So the first row is going to be stars followed by seven rows of dashes. Um, now you could do a for loop where you say print print, you know, you do, uh, in this case, six different print statements. That's not what we want. So we are going to do it in a slightly smarter way. So here I'm going to say for I in range, I'm going to start pretty much that same way. I'll say seven. 
um, and I'm going to go ahead and print a new line. And that'll work for me. We don't even need to give it a space. Um, and then I say 4J in range. And I'm going to say 7 as well. I'll go ahead and give it another uh, indentation right there. Now the trick for this is that we want to use an if statement. So I'm going to set up my two if statements. I want to say if um, I in, or I'm going to say not in, but is divisible uh, by 2. Then I want to do one thing. If I uh, 2 is not 0, do something else. This is basically going to say, hey, if it's odd, do one thing. If it's even, do another. Here, I'm going to say if you are uh, odd, I want to print star space. I'm going to do end, just like I did before. And I do not want to do that many. I want to take the same statement, and I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. And instead of a asterisk, I just cannot type today. I apologize. I'm going to give it another space. So what we're doing here is we are going through, we're iterating seven times. We're going to print a new line, and then we're going to print, uh, or we're going to do something seven times inside that loop itself. But here in J, what I want to do is I want to do something seven times, but I also want to check what loop I'm in for the outer loop. So I'm saying if I is one per se, it's not going to hit this statement. It's going to hit this. So if I is one, I want to print dashes. If I is two, I want to print stars. And then three, I'm going to print dashes. Four, since that is divisible by two, I want to print stars. And if I go ahead and click play right here, you can see I have that. And so I'm going to go ahead and comment out my draw seven code. I'm going to try this one more time. And you can see I am printing out stars, stripes, stars, stripes, stars, stripes. And the beauty of this double for loop or this nested for loop is that I'm doing that by checking my outer loop and seeing what outer loop that I am on, which doesn't change within each iteration of this J loop. That only changes the next time we come to our second I loop. Our next function is getting a little bit more involved here. We want to write a function called increasing triangle that will print out the following, and it shows me a picture here of uh, one, and then the next line is one, two, and the next line is one, two, three, and we increase on each line until we get to the number seven. So of course we want to use a uh, repeating loop. And here, what I wanted to say is, I wanna go for I in range eight, and that's gonna allow me to go through the number of times that I want. And in each of these loops, I'm going to start by, if I can print, I'm sorry, if I can type, I wanna print. And I will also do J in range. Now the secret here is, the, and the question is, what do we do for the J range, right? Because we've been doing J7 before because we know we want a uniform grid, but this time the grid changes. Well, the beauty of this is I want to print I times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going ahead and I'm going to print J. And um, I think that pretty much should be it. I'm going to do J plus 1 because I can see in my notes that's going to give me the value I want. And I want to go ahead and end right there. Um, so what you can see is going to happen is I go for I in range 8. So I want to iterate 8 times in my outer loop. I'm going to print a new line. Then for J in range, the very first time we go through this, we're only going to print once. So I'm only going to print... And I'm only going to go for this J loop one time because I'm judging it by range I, right? And A, I, in that very first outer loop is only going to be one. And then for J in range uh, I, I just print out J that number of times. The second time we go for the outer loop, J will repeat twice. The third time we go through the outer loop, J will repeat uh, three times. And we can see that if we go ahead and uncomment this, and we're going to go ahead and comment our stars and stripes script, and I run less than four, you can see I get that descending thing right here. I can get that descending um, that descending pyramid. And I'm also going to add some code just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to add a space right there, and I click Run. You can see I don't get what I want. Okay, actually, I want to do this slightly differently. I want to leave my space down here, and I'm actually just going to add another end equals parenthesis, and if I click Run, you can see I get that little perfectly formatted grid, or I should say perfectly formatted pyramid. 
And finally, our last function is called vertical stars and stripes. It is a variation of the second function that we wrote, except now we are going to look at a function um, and we are going to do it so that the leftmost column is all dashes, the uh, next column in is stars, then dashes for the next column in stars. So we kind of iterate between the different uh, inside of the loops itself. So to make my life easy, I'm going to go ahead and rip this code right here because it does something very, very, very similar to what we want. I have a double thing right here and I'm pretty sure I'm going to wing this because I'm actually not looking at my notes. I'm pretty sure I just want J to be uh, checking for, you know, what's going to be zero or not. Because here all I'm saying is I'm going to go for I and then for J in range, if J is odd, I want to print um, a dash. If it's even, I want to print a star. So each time I go through this range, the first time I go through J, it's going to be odd. I'm going to print a dash. The second time it goes through, it's going to be a star. And that's going to be uniform every single time I go through my outer loop. And if I go ahead and click play, you can see it's not going to do it because I have the wrong code uncommented. And now if I run it, you can see uh, my result is somewhat reversed, but regardless, it is exactly what I want it to be. So that is... Uh, pretty much the entire lab. There's a little bit of a bonus, but we're not going to do that on this video. I'll probably post a separate video for it, but I hoped this uh, look at uh, lesson um, three for unit four, the lab is very useful to you, and I hope to see you again in another video. Thank you guys very much.